Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to take a look at how you can set up and adjust the payroll settings in Zero. So here we're not talking about setting up employees using their tax file number declaration and that kind of thing, but we're more talking about the back end settings within Zero for how payroll runs with the calendars and so forth. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the settings. And if you do want to have a look at how you can set up employees in Xero or add a link up the top there, I did make a video on that, so you can refer to that. That'll help you with that. And that will feed through into what we're going to look at in this video. So we're in settings here and we're going to go to payroll settings. And we've got a few tabs at the top here that we need to work through. So starting off here, organization, we've got a lot of different bank accounts here and um, chart of account selections. So you choose your bank account that you're going to be paying your wages from. The wages payable account, this is your payroll clearing account. So this means that once a payroll is posted to the general ledger, when the actual money comes out of the bank account and is paid to the employees, this is the account that you reconcile it to. So the default account with zero is your wages payable account 804. But yours might be different depending on how you've set it up. Your pay as you go liability account, this is for money that is withheld from employees' wages to pay their taxes on their personal tax return. It goes to this account here, pay as you go withholdings payable. Your wages expense account, this is the gross payment that goes to employees. So the payment that they are paid before tax comes out goes to this wage expense account. Superannuation liability, when you post your payroll and you post the expense to the superannuation expense account on the profit and loss, it will also post a credit to the superannuation liability account on the balance sheet. And then much the same with wages payable account, which is also on the balance sheet. When you actually pay the money out to the super fund, so not when you post the payroll, but when you actually pay the money out to the super fund, you'll put it to this super payable account, which will deb debit that account and it will revert the balance to zero, showing that your super liability has been paid out in full for that period. Payroll tracking. Now, if you are tracking cost centers, I'll show you how to do this. And I made a video about how to track for cost centers as well. So I'll put a link up in the top for that if you're interested in how to do tracking in Zero or job coding, as you may know it by. So we're gonna go settings in the advanced settings, tracking categories. Now we can see here they've got a cost center set up for region and the sub selections that sit under the region cost center are east side, north, south and west coast. So here you have an option to track your wages expenses via the region cost center. So then for each employee, you can say whether they're working on the east side, the north, south or west coast. And you can do the same with the timesheets here. Do you want to show the annual salary on the pay slip? Yes. And do you want to show the employment basis? Now the employment basis, I'll show you here. It just refers to this field here. So if you're showing the employment basis on the pay slip, it's going to pull from this field here, whether they're full-time, part-time, casual, etc. Then you can put in your company logo here. And then we move on to the calendar. So when you have an employee, you have to 
enter what calendar you're going to be paying them under. Uh, is it a weekly payroll? Is it a fortnightly payroll? Is it a monthly payroll? And you put it in here. So you can, we can see here, James LeBron is set up on the fortnightly calendar. And you can see here, this is the fortnightly calendar. So there's a weekly calendar as well. So basically when you go in and you set it up, you would give it a name. You'd enter when the next pay period is. So which fortnight is the next one? And then you'd say when the next payment date is. So the payment date is normally a couple of days following the end of the pay period. And you can say whether it's going to be a default pay run or not. So whether when you do a pay run, does it default to fortnightly or does it default to weekly? So there are your calendars, holidays. This all comes up automatically, but you can make edits as well. You can add and remove holidays and we've got all the different states here. So basically that feeds through to the holiday group here. And if we hover over the question mark, it just says public holidays from the assigned holiday group will be taken into account for leave calculations. So if you're gonna set them up for New South Wales, this employee, then it would be drawing from the New South Wales public holidays here and adjusting their leave accordingly. when it accrues for the leave. Pay items. So here you have all the different um, earnings categories, deductions, leave and reimbursements. The main two you're gonna be concerned with are earnings and leave. So you've got your, your ETP payments, your termination payments. There's an allowance here, ordinary time earnings, that's your normal payroll, your normal wages. Overtime, where you won't get your super. And then you can go in here, you can say whether it's reportable as W1. This is whether it feeds through to your BAS statement automatically. That's optional, that you can also manually enter your W1 earnings when you are doing your BAS statement but you can do this to have it feed through automatically by selecting yes here. And we can see here for overtime, it's a multiple 1.5 of the ordinary earnings rate, time and a half. It's exempt from super, and you probably would click here to say it's reportable as W1. Uh, you probably wouldn't accrue leave because it's overtime and it probably wouldn't be exempt from pay as you go withholding because they still have to pay tax on it. But if you're unsure of anything here, you can speak to your accountant. We'll have a look at the ordinary hours. So that's just the rate per unit, the ordinary hours. It would be reportable as W1, but this is optional as I was mentioning. You can do it manually when you do your BAS statement. Um, it is not exempt from the super guarantee because it does get super guarantee on your ordinary earnings and it is not exempt for pays you go withholding because you do pay tax on that and you do have that tax withheld. Deductions. So here there's deductions for FBT, fringe benefits, lease payments if they're on a novated lease for a car or something like that um, and so on union fees, this is other expenses that will be taken out of their pay. Any employee reimbursements can be entered in here. And then leave. So you've got your annual leave. Yes, it is showed on the pay slip. 152 hours, that's four weeks at 38 hour weeks showing the balance on the pay slip, which is pretty normal. There's also an option here to have leave loading. And personal carers leave, which is your sick leave, which is 10 days for a 38 hour week. And sick leave is normally not shown on the pay slip. 
that box is not ticked. Only annual leave is normally shown on the payslip. Moving over to superannuation. So here is where you add your superannuation funds that various employees will be members of. So if you've got a, multiple employees who are members of the same fund, you only add the fund once. And then once you add the fund, you'll be able to link the employee to that fund down here. But if you're going to add a super membership, see when we do the drop down here, we've got the CA Cornford Private and the EJ Ahern Private. And that draws from here. So you have to enter it here in the payroll settings before you can pick it up in the employee setup. Now, if you want to add a new fund, you can click here. You have an option here to do a regulated super fund, which is most super funds, or a self-managed fund. You can search by the USI number or the fund name. So say we got a REST super here, the Retail Employees Super Trust. Your employer number is optional. This is more common back in the day before we started using clearinghouses and SuperStream. You don't need it so much these days, or we don't really need it at all these days. And see it's brought up the USI here because we searched by name and it brought up the USI and you can double check this back to your fund. They'll be able to tell you all this or you'll be able to get it off their website as well. And then you simply click add and that's it. And then when you're in the employee section here, you'll be able to pick it up on this drop down list and enter the employee's membership number. So important here guys, this employer number is not the employee number, uh, which is not the membership number. The employee number and the membership number are the same thing, but just make sure you don't get the membership number mixed up with employer number. Anyway, that's pretty much it guys. As uh, you've seen here, they've, there's a couple parts to setting up payroll and zero. You've got the back end settings in here with payroll settings, which can also flow through to your tracking settings. And also you have to set up the employee info in the card file here. So I hope you learned something from the video. If you've got any questions, or if you want to book in a training session, head down to the description. There's a link there to our website. We can set up a training session for you. If you've got a quick question, you can add a question underneath the comment section below. We'll see what we can do to help there as well. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.